A hundred thousand children who came here alone without parents, we don't know where they're at. I'll tell you where they're at. They're in the cartels. The cartels are using them for hard labor and sex trade. Not how do you, as how do you like identify a smuggler on the freeway? Our guys get really good. You know, it used to be under, under the last administration, it was a lot easier because the cartels weren't making as much money. They've gone from making $500 million to $13 billion a year. In and a large time part, well, that, pretty much 2021. I mean, that's, that changed right then. Are you serious? Yeah. Can you it say that overnight. again? So from 2021, they went from 500 million? In 2020, million. they were making 500 million a year to 2021, now making 10, 13 billion dollars a year. Wait, we're talking one year? That's how quickly it changed. And they're consistently making that kind of money now. Why? Holy shit. Because of the human trafficking and the drug trafficking. So fentanyl is a big part of it. But the other, and, and the other part is they've become global. What we did with, with the open border policies, what happened is, is that you, you gave them the ability to grow their businesses. Why? Because you gave them cash on hand. Where does the cash on hand come from? It comes from the people who come from all over the world who now are going to give the cartel five, $6,000, up to $50,000, depending on what country you come from. The cartel now has an a, a, a influx of business coming in and people are paying cash on hand. Their business model was different before. Their business model wasn't based on people coming and paying to come into the country. That was a part of it. But their business model was on selling drugs within the country. So what did they have to do? They had to pay out money to get the drugs into America. Then you got to pay to get the drugs to Omaha, Nebraska. Then you got to pay somebody to sell it. They take a cut of it. Now you have to pay somebody that's going to stay out there and recover the money because they don't just work on good faith. You know, the cartel doesn't say, hey, Sean, sell the drugs. Whenever you finish selling them, send them back. Send me the money. It's not how it works. So now you have somebody that they get paid to recover the money. And now they got to ship the money back down to Mexico and run the risk of getting caught. So that was a lot more heavy the business model of how they made money was a lot different. Now they have cash, so much cash, you don't know what to do with it. So what are they doing now? They're expanding their operations globally. Now they're becoming the people that are providing the drugs and the fentanyl to places, not just in America, they're, play, they're South America, Africa, Europe. Not Also, they have become armies. They have enough funding now, billions of dollars to buy the best guns, the weapons, the weaponry, the, the, you know, the personnel carriers. I mean, these guys have miniature armies down there. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I've interviewed uh, a couple of investigative journalists uh, on this subject, quite a few of them, actually, one of them being Luis Chaparro and that guy. He talks about the last time he was on, he was talking about these armies. And, you know, I just, I never realized that it, it at some point it had changed from basically, I mean, it, what seemed like bigger than gang violence, but along the same type of thing to straight up. I mean, they have uniforms and yeah. gear and yeah. chest rigs and, optics and this isn't this isn't gang violence anymore no these are they're it's a military they're military operations and they are designed to protect billion dollar operations and the real the, they make even more money now because before if i were to sell you a pill how many times can i sell you a pill or a gram of coke or a gram of meth once once you consume it, it's gone. Mm -hmm. How many times can I sell you a woman or a child? Hundreds, hundreds of times. So not only do these people pay to come in, if they can't pay, then the cartels give them credit. And the way they make them work it off is either labor, which is you're going to see more crime across this country because these people paid the cartels to come in here. Even if they 
showed up from other countries, the cartels are making sure they're getting their money. I mean, there's parts the Gulf cartel, the uh, cartel de Golfo, those guys are putting wristbands on people to make sure that they know they paid. So they're charging you to come across, and if you can't pay, they'll do it on credit, and then you have to work it off. So now you're seeing a lot of breaking and enterings and stuff because people owe the cartels. They don't want to, so I got to go steal something. If I can't find a job to pay for what I owe the cartel, then I'm going to steal it. The women end up working it off in the sex trade. The children, which by the way, are about 150,000 um, unaccompanied minors a year right now. 150,000. Our government has admitted they don't know where about 100,000 of those children are. I mean... How are Americans not outraged to know that 100,000 children who came here alone without parents, we don't know where they're at? I'll tell you where they're at. They're in the cartels. The cartels are using them for hard labor and sex trade. And if you don't think so, let me just give you some statistics on child sexual abuse material, CSAM. CSAM is any... A photo or video depicting a child being raped or naked. So in um, 2014, we had 4 million reports of CSAM, 4 million, to the NICMIC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. 4 million reports of that. So that means people called and said, hey, this image, this, whatever, 4 million times. That's a lot. Last year was 32 million CSAM uh, reports. 32 million. So don't tell me that these children are not being trafficked in this country. And we have become the biggest place for slavery. And we have been the biggest place for perverse things like child sexual abuse material. Yeah, we're the number one. The United States of America is the number one consumer of child pornography in the world. Yes. And the cartels are willing to meet that. And they make a lot of money off of it. And it's continual money. They sell these women over and over again. We had a woman that was coming across the border. We caught her. And she had a baggie full of pills. Which, by the way, eight of ten women are raped when they come across. But... She had a baggie full of pills. Eight of 10 women are Eight raped. Eight of 10 women and 50% of gay and trans people are raped by the cartels when they come across. So she had a baggie full of pills, like 50 pills. And we said, what are these pills? And she said, well, when I was going to cross the border, I knew I'd be raped multiple times. These are morning after pills. You know, where do we get as a country to where we put politics in front of people? Because that's what's happening. Because politically, your side says we want open borders. We're, a, a, we're, we're allowing eight of 10 women to be raped as they come into this country or children to just disappear into back into the hands of the cartels. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, Please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.